Hi everybody, Sarah here at the Big Blue House Homestead. Uh, recently I was gifted and inherited a ton of old mason jars. Lots of old mason jars. Problem with these is they were stored in a barn or they were stored in the old basement that had a actual dirt floor, almost like a root cellar. So they've got that musty smell and that old quality and they're all like really kind of gross and dingy. So I have been washing up mason jars for about 24 hours now. Lots of loads, lots and lots of stuff. And I wanted to share how it is that I do that because I can get this little nasty gross jar to be shiny and pretty. And that makes this a usable jar. This is still a usable jar once it's cleaned. All you have to do is check your rims and make sure you don't have any issues with nicks or cracks or anything. They fit your standard nowadays bar ball lids. So it's nothing but a ball jar, just an old one. I wanted to share that with you guys because like I said, I inherited a bunch of them. I'll show you what I'm working with and then I'm gonna show you how I actually clean them because it's just an easy process, but it just takes a little bit more effort than if you grab a brand new box off the shelf and just throw them in to sanitize. These need a little bit of love to them. <laughs> so let me show you that. That way we can uh, get through this process and you'll be able to clean jars, especially if you find them at estate sales, under houses, maybe in your grandma's basement, old barns, whatever, they're still usable jars. They're still good quality. And in fact, a lot of them have better glass quality than the ones we use nowadays. Okay, I'm down to the last two bins. I have gone through seven already. And you can see, I mean, these are very, very old and dirty. And so I've got to get these all cleaned. And it doesn't take very long. It just takes a couple, I don't know, 30 minutes in the soak and then a couple minutes to wash each one. And then you throw them in the dishwasher. But you can see lots of jars here I have been working on and they are all nice and clean now. Absolutely beautifully clean. And there are some really cool jars here. So eventually I'll do a video on some of these really neat antique jars. But I wanna teach you guys how to do this. So we're gonna go over to the sink and I'll show you a quick process and we can get it done. Okay, first things first, my sink looks nasty but it's because it's apple cider vinegar. I prefer to use warm water to kind of hot not boiling hot water glass is very temperamental and so it can break and crack so it needs to be to where it's warm enough to the touch but it's not going to hurt the glass i get my sink with a couple glasses however many of the jars that i'm going to do and i like to come through and just put a little bit of water in them you can use warm water it helps them kind of get used to the other side and i'll take them and i'll swish the water around in the bottoms and that'll release any of the stuff that's in there because I have found some weird things, bugs and all sorts of stuff. Look at this. It's an old Presto mason jar. I didn't even know Presto had mason jars. So what I do is I then take the jar and I put it into the sink and I fill it almost to the top and start lining them up. So each of these are going to get a little bit of a swish and put into the water. If you have rust rings on these, I recommend that you actually soak them flat side down so that they're underneath the water completely because what happens when you use vinegar instead of bleach is the vinegar will actually eat away at anything that's stuck on the outside so it will eat away at some of the rust and things like that so i prefer vinegar to bleach if you use bleach you have to be very cautious about that because that's something you're putting into your food itself and we can all you know agree that these jars used to be filled with vinegar at one point some of them were probably, you know, award-winning state fair pickles, <laughs> things like that. So having vinegar in them is actually a lot better than the bleach. It's up to you, though, personal preference. But I like the vinegar. Again, it eats away at stuff. And it also will sit there and um, get rid of the smells. It gets rid of all that nasty kind of mildewy smell that's in there. I'm trying to fill this hole up in my sink so things don't fall. Um, but it'll get rid of the must and it'll get rid of any of the residue that's really hard on there. So I'm going to fill my sink up and then I'll show you what we're going to do. At this point, I'm just going to come through and fill all the way to the top on all these jars and make sure that they have a lot of water in them so that they get clean to the very, very brim. Okay, now that I've filled up the inside of the jars, I'm just going to fill the sink back up again because as you take water out, it's going to go down. And then that way I can have a lot more in here. Now I didn't mention the amount of vinegar that I actually put in here is probably about half a cup to a cup's worth of vinegar. You can even go more than that. It's not going to hurt it. 
but I'm just going to fill this up and get these ready and we'll get them washed. Okay, I've let these soak for about half an hour now and that's ideal because it's going to get most of this stuff off because the vinegar will eat through it. But what I like to do is I'll just pick up a jar and dump out as much of the liquid as I can and then I bring it over here and on the other side of the sink. I like to use this type of brush. It has this ring in the center and this ring actually fits and it's dirty. I'm sorry guys, I've been cleaning so many jars, but this ring actually fits around that inside lip. If you ever put your hand inside of a jar, it kind of bubbles down in some, like I guess that's a concaving inward, but you have like a little bit of a lip on the edge and you can get this around there real well. See how it just fits up there real good. And so that gives me a chance to scrape anything that's going to be stuck in those sides. And I'll just come through and I'll scrape all the edges as best as I can and use my brush. And I don't put soap on it. I just use it as it is with just the vinegar water. And you can dip it back in if it starts to dry out. But I just scrub real hard on the inside. And I got this brush at the dollar store, so it wasn't very expensive at all. Make sure my sponge is nice and wet. Get some soap on here. And the first thing I do is I wash the outside. And I just give it a nice little rub down. And that's just to see what residues are still left. Having a light source or a window in front of you to hold this up to helps you see really well. Now I can already see that there's some marks still on here. So what I'm gonna do now for any of the printed parts is I'm going to scrub back and forth, side to side. And then I'm going to go up and down. And then just give it another rinse and check to make sure you get all that old water stuff off. Because there's a lot of water marks, uh, water residue, hard water spots, things like that. Now I'll take my sponge at this point and I'll just bring it into the jar and rub it around. Fold it over the lip and I'll scrub pretty hard with my thumb. I wanna make sure I get in between those grooves. And just give it a rinse and look. If you see anything stuck in here, use the edge of your sponge and just go back in and clean it. And it's not a whole lot of scrubbing. But once these are done, then I put them into my dishwasher. Now I do recommend working in small batches, um, giving yourself some haste in between. Take a break, because like putting this sponge in, the position that my finger gets in, this is actually getting really sore and unfortunately I have so many more jars to still wash. I'm just going to work through the pain, but just pace yourself. You have plenty of time before canning season and you want to just make sure you have nice clean jars. When it comes time to start to use these, all you should be able to do is pull them out and run them through a sterile cycle. So yeah, just clean your jars up really well. Nice shiny jars again. And like I said, soaking them in the vinegar is going to get most of that residue off. And if you happen to come back and you see some more, you can always rewash. It's not a big deal. But if you find any that have rust spots that really will not go away, I don't recommend canning with them. I recommend that you just use those for decorational purposes or for storing dry goods. Um, it might actually give you like a faulty seal. So watch for that. The difference between the bleach and the vinegar when you're washing these jars is that the vinegar, like I said, will eat off anything that's stuck on, any hard you know, residues and any hard water spots. The bleach is just going to lighten it and discolor it. It's not going to help you know, like move it from the jars. But the vinegar also doesn't make them kind of slippery and slimy like uh, bleach does. Uh, and so that's why I prefer vinegar. I think it works a lot better. Plus, like in, you know, you make pickles in these jars at some point. Somebody's grandmother did, somebody's mother, whoever, made pickles, so they were full of vinegar. And it doesn't deteriorate the glass or have any problems with that. Now, if you're pulling any of these glasses and you do see imperfections, make sure you set them aside immediately. That way you're not getting them mixed up with the good jars. And you can always tell by running your finger across the rims which ones are, you know, broken or chipped or dinged. And I always check my bottoms. I'll hold them up to a light and look up through them. And if there's any cracks in them, I put those to the side immediately. Those don't even get used for canning at all because they'll just bust. They'll break in the actual... Um, canning process in the pressure canners or the water bath canners and then you waste your product. I hope this helps. It is perfectly fine to use old mason jars. In fact I have some that are on the table. Like I said I'll probably do another video if you want to see you know all the weird jars that I got. But I have some that are like dated from like the 1910s and they're perfectly good.
they've been around that long why not use them and it's really cool to use old jars anyway so hope this helped you guys out i hope you guys learned something from it and again any of them that have rust soak them a little bit longer under the water completely submerged and if you can't get all the rust off don't can with those you may end up with a false seal but thank you guys for stopping by and i will see you in the next one